Aleluya. Aleluya. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Come on, don't stop praising him. Come on. God is too good not to be praised in this house. God is too good not to be praised. Let me hear you praise him. Come on. Come on, praise his holy name. Somebody shout it out. Shout out your freedom, your gratitude in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on in. Let, let everybody else come on in as we get started. I love, you know, as I walk around here and say hi to people, you can feel the excitement, the joy. Amen. People from Facebook, YouTube, come on out and visit us. Come on and hang out with us. Let me tell you what God is doing in this place. What God is doing in the families, what God is doing in the man, what God is doing in me. Praise God. Amen. Is, there, is anybody getting worked on right now? Is God doing something in your life right now? God doing something in your family right now? Come cool. So this is why we're here to give them thanks, to give them glory, to give them honor. Oh, man, I'm excited. All right, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go through our, our, yes. All right, here we go. Women's night. Women's Christmas lunch. How do you say it? Luncheon. 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 Thank you, guys. Can we hear it for the woman? Come on. Saturday, December 9th. Come on down. Next one, please. We're going to, ooh, one of our own right here, Brother Diego. It's ordination, baby. Come on, it's service. So come on out, guys, and celebrate. It's a, it's a huge thing, huge. What a blessing that is, amen? amen? Be excited. All right, here we go. Our Christmas celebration. Let me tell you, it's the 24th. Us Christians, we should be here. Amen. We're out there for celebrating other things. This is this is our day. This is our day. This is what we do while we while we're here. Amen. So come on out, man. The, the, if you got a family event, they can you can go after. Just come on, celebrate, and, and you know, allow the people around you to see that you know what, this is what it's about. You know, people are over, already stressing uh, about gifts, about what food and what we're gonna do. It, it's just, you already got the big gift. The gift of salvation. So as, as we get ready to do this service, let me tell you, the, the, the youth is preparing a skit. Woo. We're preparing a skit. And let me tell you, invite somebody. The point of this skit is to let people know who Jesus is, who you Jesus is. The reason why you're here. So if, if you know somebody that doesn't know nothing about Jesus, bring them out. Bring them out. And even those that are, even if you have people that have walked away, Bring him out so they can be reminded who Jesus is. Amen, amen. And why it is that he came to give his life for you, to love you unconditionally. Amen. amen. Are we ready over here? Amen. Are we ready and excited over here? Amen. <laughs> All right. I want to read something to you. All right, let me pray first. Father, we just thank you, Father, for today, Lord. How excited it is to be in your house, Father. How excited it is, Father, to gather with our brethren, Father, to worship you, Father. We thank you, Father, for uh, all that you are doing here at Turning Point Fellowship, Father. Thank you, Father, that you uh, continue to, your hand just continue to move in this place, Father. We thank you, Father, that as we get ready to end this year, Father, Lord. We thank you for the fire that you have placed in these men, Father. And the families, Father. And the women in this place, Father. We thank you, Father, for the, the, the vision, Father, that continues to grow, Father, as we begin to outreach the community here, Father. We thank you, Father, that as we continue to push forward, Father, and not give up, but just draw closer to you, Father. Continue to just use us, Father. We thank you, Father, and as we gather here, Father, we want to worship your name, Father. For you are worthy to be praised, Father. Te damos gracias, Señor. We thank you. We love you. Thank you for everybody that's here. Thank you that for people that are watching right now, that, I, uh, that, that they will receive, Father, that they will open their hearts, Father. We will open our hearts, Father, to receive your word, Father, that our lives will be changed, Father. In the name of Jesus, we give you honor and glory. And everybody's here says, Amen. Amen. 
Aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya. I want everybody, just want to try something real quick. Everybody can look at the cross. Worship team, you as well, please. Everybody just face the cross, please. Face the cross. Now everybody, everybody in this place, turn, turn your backs. Look at the screen behind you. Please, just, just turn around, please. Now you can look forward to the cross now. I just want to remind you where God brought you from. I just want to remind you how far God brought you from. So continue to worship Him. Continue to give Him glory. Continue to give Him honor. Amen. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. How many of you guys yes, are excited about the kingdom of God? How many of you guys are excited what Jesus is doing in this time? How many of you guys know that we serve a supernatural God? Glory. Gozate, gozate. Defeated, you never lost a battle. For you, all things are possible. For you are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. For you are supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. To Him who came to earth and died, beyond the blessings of the honor. To Him who rose and is alive, beyond the glory of the You've never been defeated. You've never lost a battle. For you, all things are possible. For you are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. To Him who turned the water into wine. Beyond the blessing of the honor To him who gave sight to the blind Beyond the glory of the honor To him who gave heal today All the blessing of the honor Yesterday, today the same Now and forever For you are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. How many of you believe in a supernatural God? I said, how many of you believe in a supernatural God? It doesn't matter how we feel, it doesn't matter what we're going through. When there's an opportunity to praise, we should be worshiping. We should be praising because God is working on our behalf. I said God is working on our behalf. God is working on your behalf right now. 
You chose the greater part. You chose to come to his house. So guess what? He's working on your house. And we're going to rejoice and we're going to praise because he's worthy of it. I said he's worthy of it. You've never and you've never been defeated. And you never lost a battle. For you all things are possible. For you are a supernatural. Supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, 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 unchangeable, unchangeable, unstoppable, unshakable, supernatural God, omnipotent, preeminent, magnificent, supernatural God, Supernatural God, eternal, eternal, immortal, immortal, invisible, invisible, supernatural, unchangeable, unchangeable, unstoppable, unshakable, supernatural God, omnipotent, preeminent, magnificent, supernatural God, miraculous, victorious, so glorious, supernatural eternal, eternal, immortal, immortal. You never been defeated. You never lost a battle. For you all things are possible. For you are a supernatural, 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 God, supernatural, 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 supernatural. We're not awake yet. I said, we are not awake yet. We got to let the kingdom of darkness know that we serve a supernatural God. So on the count of three, we're going to sing the chorus again. You've never been defeated. Only we're going to remind the devil that he's defeated because we're all going to jump in this house. Amen. I said, we're all going to jump in this house. Amen. You've never, you've never been defeated. You never lost a battle. For you all things are possible. For you are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. All things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Hallelujah! All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah.
creation nothing breaks down the king of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Santo Señor
search my heart. I search my heart. So do what only you can. Jesus has your way. Jesus. Jesus has your way. Holy One, the Righteous One, the Faithful One.
guide our way, Father. But only you, Lord, you know what it is that we need, Father. We thank you, Father, because you are, Father, Jehovah Jireh, Father. You are provider, Lord. You give us all that we need, Father, and all that we desire as we commit our ways to you, Lord. You are Jehovah Rapha, Father. You are my healer, Lord. I thank you for the healing that takes place right now, Father. Spiritually, Father. Physically, Father. Emotionally, Father. Financially, Father. Whatever it is, Father. You know what we desire. You know what it needs, our Father. Father, you are Jehovah Shalom, Father. You are the Prince of Peace, Father. We thank you for the peace that you give to each and every one of us, Father. A peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. Oh, Father, when the enemy comes, Father, you are the tower of refuge, Father. Oh, we love you, Lord. You are Jehovah Nisi, Father. You are the banner of victory in which we stand, Lord. <laughs> you went to the cross for each and every one of us, Father. Shed your blood, Father, that our sins would be forgiven. And we would have life, Father, and have life more abundantly, Lord. And you said, Father, it is finished. It is done we walk in that victory, Lord, because we know how the story ends, Father. <laughs> oh, we love you, Jesus. You are the great I am, Father. You are our Shaddai, Lord. You're more than enough for us. <laughs> I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. We're going to continue our worship as we can find a way to make our way back to our seats. We're going to continue our form of worship as we give our tithes, as we give our offerings. And we just thank the Lord because He gives us the health to gain the wealth. We all know that God's Word. God's word says, it says, uh, one-tenth belongs to the Lord, but us who have been blessed beyond measure, <laughs> one-tenth is not sufficient. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We have our number up here on text to give. That number is, and where's the children at? Number 714 seven. Seven. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, 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 come on, children, where are we at? All right, let's do it. Try that one more time. Here we go. Seven, one, four, four, seven, 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 three, six. All right. You can text to give. We have our Q QR. Is that what it is? QR? Uh, you can give that way. Uh, for those of you that bring cash or a check or whatnot, for those of you that do have cash or uh, a check, our two handsome us married ushers, uh, if you would raise your hand, they'll go ahead and uh, give you an envelope, please. And as they're doing that, I would like to go ahead and pull up a scripture. Uh, Brother Ryan called me, and uh, he wanted to know if I would uh, be gracious enough, and I love that word, gracious enough, to... Uh, <laughs> to do the tithes and the offering. And uh, as I was preparing, I was looking and stuff and whatnot, and, 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 and I got the revelation this morning. That's how good God is. Uh, I had several other scriptures. But as we're entering into the Advent season, which is the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, <coughs> and it's a very, very familiar scripture. We should all be familiar with it. Uh, and it's John 3, 16. It says, no matter how deep or how wide you open that wallet or that pocketbook, the greatest gift has already been given. Amen. And that was given for each and every one of us. And I'll read it for you. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. You know, I, I, I love the trees. I love the decor. Uh, as, as I said, as we prepare for Advent season, and uh, we just 
we need to remain focused and we can't lose lose our focus because I celebrate Christ Mus. I don't celebrate Christmas. I don't say happy holidays. I celebrate Christ because he is the one who gave his life. And I love God's word because it says he, he wasn't forced, he wasn't coerced. <laughs> he came down because he loved each and every one of us. He came down for me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I know that he came for me. And Lord only knows I needed him. God is so, so good. So as you open up your, your purses, your pocketbooks, your things, Pray, pray over it. Let God give you the amount because as pastor said, all these years, we come in with the number, we come in with the figure, and now I'm going to give $20, I'm going to give $50, I'm going to give $100, I'll give $1,000 this time. But you know what? Give the number that God has placed in your heart. And God's word says to give, <coughs> give with a joyful heart. Like I said, because any amount that we put in there, can never surpass what that scripture was telling us. He gave his only son for each and every one of you. Okay? So let's just remember that and come and give here at Turning Point Fellowship. We don't take your offering. We receive it as you give it with a glad and joyful heart. Jesus, 
Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence me. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. Ah. Hallelujah. Yeah, there's power in the name of Jesus. Ah. Oh, we love you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Go ahead and ask my uh, beautiful bride to come up. Celebrating this month. That's only God's doing. It wasn't mine. It was God. Let's stretch our hands for us as we uh, pray for this tithe. We pray for this offering. So, Father, we just thank you for this tithe, Lord. We thank you for this offering. We ask you to bless it, Father. We ask you to multiply it. We thank you, Lord, that each and every need here at Turning Point Fellowship is met according to your riches and glory, Father. We just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Father, what you're continuing to do, Father, because we know how it ends. As we just pray that you open up the windows of heaven, Father, continue to pour out blessings, Father, that we cannot contain, Lord. <laughs> you say, Father, that men will hunt us down and search us, Father, giving into our bosom. And we thank you for that right now, Father, that as we enter into this special season, this special time, Father, we thank you for allowing and sending your son, Father, to come, Father, so that he became flesh, Father, and he walked among us, that he is the light, Lord, he is the tower of refuge that we seek, Father, that our sins are forgiven, Father. More than that, Father, we just thank you for his love, Father, for his grace and his mercy that abounds each and every day, Lord. Father, we just pray for each and every family represented here today, Father, that you would just continue to bless them, Father. Bless those that gave, Father, those that heart, uh, had a heart to give, Father, that you'd give them wisdom, understanding, and discernment, Father, to know what belongs to you, Father. Your word says that all the cattle on the hills belong to you, Father. That we would not let ourselves be rooted here on earth, Father. <laughs> because our greatest joy is when we see you face to face, Father. Father, all these material things, we thank you for them, Father. But we know that that not, does not dictate our lives, who we are, or what we do, Father. Because we are your children, Father. We call you Abba. Our Father, we love you, Lord. Father, we just continue to pray for Turning Point Fellowship, Father, that as we continue to lay the seed down, Father, that someone will water it, Father, someone will till the soil, someone will nurture it, Father, and some will reap, Lord. We just say that it will produce a hundredfold, Father, a hundredfold in your name, Lord. We thank you, Father, once again. For each and everyone here today, Father, that the, as we enter in, Father, that the word comes forth today, Father, like a two-edged sword, Father, <laughs> separating the bone from the marrow. <laughs> Father, that our pastor has showed himself approved, Father, that the word falls on each and every one of us, Father, that the Holy Spirit would just open up our inner ear, that we would hear the word, Father, and what it has for us, Lord. Father, we thank you, and we praise you, and we bless you, Father. Jesus' name and all his beautiful children said.
this time, we'd like to go ahead and release our, our worship team. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, as they help us enter in. I use the word help because as we come in, I know that we are already prepared. We're already prayed up, and we're ready to receive what God has to give for us, each and every one of us. Fam, what I'd like to do, I'd like to go ahead and welcome up our pastor, <laughs> Pastor Strange of Roots. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and uh, release our children. Let's give them a good round of applause. We're going to release our youth. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, you guys can do better than that. These are your children. <clears throat> That's the future right there, future doctors, lawyers. Come on, nurses, administrative assistants. They're going to be owners. They're going to own their own business one day. They don't do it now. You know, if it's not happening... These children, you know, you got to celebrate these children. Uh, before you sit, are, are there any first-time visitors here? Your first time here at Turning Point Fellowship? Right back here. If you want to give her a hand. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. You got him. You got him. Thank you. Come on, give them a good round of applause. Turn around. You remember. Celebrate the people. Celebrate their life. That they. Amen. Amen. If you would just fill that out for us and we'll go ahead and give it to one of our ushers. And uh, if you don't want us to uh, reach you on email, just, you know, just write no emails, please, and we won't do it. You know, we just want to know your name and introduce ourselves to, to, you, to you. People in the church, uh, after church, you guys know what to do. I shouldn't even have to say that any longer. Amen. That you go up and you introduce yourself to people, right? You say hi and uh, hug on them and things like that. You know, so... Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, oh, man, 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 what the Lord does in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm a, we're, we're a different church. We're not an ordinary church that has an hour, you know, to go and things like that. And then we go home, you know, you, you read the bulletin and then you pray and then you go ahead and uh, preach for 20 minutes, 25 minutes and then we're out here by the hour. That's not the way we operate. Every church has its own uh, governments and how they do things. Uh, Turning Point Fellowship, we're led by the Spirit of God. We're led by the Spirit, amen. <clears throat> so we worship God, we love God, and I know you guys, Woo, man, these people worship God for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. That's a little time. Where I come from, we used to worship for two hours before we even got into the Word of God, and that's why sun, signs, wonders, and miracles happen because of the worship of God, the praise of God, the blessing of God, you know, uh, you guys have to set up the atmosphere, you know, not just the worship team, you know, but you, you have to come with your hearts, expecting something from God. What are you expecting? What did you ask God for? You know, when we came here this morning, what did you ask God for? So we said, I didn't ask God for nothing, so you'll get nothing. But if, if you ask God for something, God will answer your prayer. He never, he never falters on, on that. So if you right now just, Father, you know, I'm looking for peace. I'm looking for restoration in my marriage. I'm looking for restoration within myself to you. You know, I haven't been faithful to you. I haven't been following you, Lord. So I want to be reconciled back to you. I want to know you as my father. I want to be confident in who you are and who I am in Christ. And that's what God wants. God wants to bless us. I don't come to church just to have church. I didn't get saved just to be saved. Uh, when I got saved years, years ago, I, I, I told the Lord, I don't want to be a fake Christian. I don't want to be a plastic Christian. I don't want to be a part-time Christian. Uh, I, give him my, I gave him my whole life, and I Still to this day, I still continue to do it. And it's a struggle. 
It's a tr struggle to live a holy life. If you guys don't know what holy is, I'm going to tell you guys what holy is. It's not, you know, having uh, your skirts all the way to your ankles and you guys up to here wearing a suit or tie. I wear a suit and tie, but today's casual day, so we're casual. Uh, I started wearing a suit again after the surgeries uh, last week. And I'll, I'll continue to wear my suits again. That's my style. That's what I like. And that's what I like our men to wear, too. They know that the leaders that are here and uh, the ushers and people in ministry should be wearing a tie and wear a suit. Not that we're religious people, but that's just the way we do things. That's the way Turning Point tells us. You know, we put up trees. We're, we're not worshiping a tree. We're not bowing down to a tree. Don't, don't video that because you guys are putting, look at Pastor was worshiping a tree. I, am, I don't worship trees. I don't worship a date. I do not worship a day. I, I worship the Savior. His name is Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. That, that's what we're here for. And my, uh, my objective here as a, as a pastor is to feed you, to challenge you, challenge you of your old ways, the way you think, the way you behave, your character. You know, to change us, ladies and gentlemen, you know, that we would learn to be a blessing to other people. It's not all about us. When you become a Christian, your life no longer belongs to you. You gave your life to Jesus Christ. You made an exchange, your life for Jesus' life. It's his life now. And this is how we live now. Even it's, it's, it's difficult to live a Christian life. It's hard to live a Christian life. If, you, if, you true, if you're truly a Christian, it's difficult. It's not easy. Right, Art? Is it easy? Heck no. It's, it's hard to be a Christian in life. We're not trying to earn heaven. We're already going to heaven. That's a promise through the faith we declare in Jesus' name. Amen? That's the grace that God has given us. It's a gift. It's a gift, you know? My name's written in the last book of life. You know, not because I'm a good guy, not because I give money, or I'm not a good guy. It's just a promise of God. And I believe that. So I'm going to live that way. And I'm not going to live the way I want to live because my way is a sinful nature. You know, all of us fall short of the glory of God and all of us uh, fall sometimes and we have sin. We mess it. We blow it. But that, we're not trying to do that. We're not living a sinful life. We're trying to live a Christian life, a godly life, a holy life unto God. And that's why I say it's difficult. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? Amen? There's nothing too big or nothing too hard for our God. And if we allow him to use us and surrender and say, Father, use me. I want to be used. You know, he'll use you at a supermarket, at the WIC program, use you at the, at the laundry, in your house. He'll use you. If you ask him to use you, he will use you to bless your, your sons, you know. Uh, he uses you to cook for them and, you know, to hug on them and love on them like they never have before. You know, God wants to do that with us, to hug on each other and love on each other. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. So that's what we're here for as Christians, not because it's Christmas time. And not because, you know, oh, man, these guys go long. Our church, is, our, our time usually goes about two hours. It does. Praise and worship probably goes for about 30, 35 minutes, you know. And then uh, we, we preach for about 35 to 50 minutes, you know. But uh, the word will capture, uh, it'll capture, it'll capture you, the word of God, the anointing will. If you listen, if you come and you have your ears open, your heart open to what God is doing, God will minister to you. God will drop things in you. Don't look at the babies to your left or to your right. Don't look at those people that have bald spots on the back of their head or anything like that. <laughs> Serious, because we get distracted by little things, you know. Someone walks in or the phone goes off. Oh, my God, where's the phone at? They act like never uh, you know, uh, heard a phone ring, you know. Shine that on, man. Just keep your eyes on God. I was trained that way as an usher. I didn't move to the left or right or people fell and they're crying and yelling. I didn't, oh, my God. I, I was trained to keep my eyes forward, and that's the way I minister the word of God, and I want you guys to know that. Stay focused. 
what breaks a lot of us. That we're not focused people. Let's be focused on where we're going. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, if you guys would stand in the presence of God. <coughs> if you have your Bibles, put them in your right hand. If you don't have a Bible, there's a Bible that should be in front of you. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. These ushers are ready. They're ready to give you a Bible if, if you need a, a Bible. But it's a church that we read the Bible. We do open up the book and all that, you know. You two right here, you two right here. Cynthia, play a church right in there, please. You two. I want you guys to look at each other. I want you to hold her hand and just hug her. Say, I love you. I love you. The way you are. Forgive you. I forgive you. For the way you are. For the way you are. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just, when I was worshiping God, it was giving me instruction. You know? Uh, yeah, it's all about obedience. If we obey, we're going to be better. We struggle because we don't obey. We miss God because we don't obey. We're stubborn, right? By nature, we're stubborn people. We're tercos cabezones. Amen? By nature, by human nature, we are. But when we have the natural, uh, the nature of God, the supernaturalness of God living inside of us, all things are possible. Your life can change radically, Crystal. Radically. I mean, radically. By this time next year, they won't even recognize you if you would just surrender to God. People wouldn't recognize you. Amen. It, it happened to my life. God just radically changed my life. In 24 hours, I asked God to change my life. 24 hours, t September 25th, I was a different person, but I had to learn how to be the character of God. You know, God forgave me my sins and all those things, and those things were done and dealt with right there in a matter of 24 hours. When I woke up, I knew something happened different. I go, I'm different. But I couldn't say hallelujah, glory to God. I couldn't do that because I wasn't that. I, I didn't know that stuff. But I knew something had happened in my life. That something was changed now. And what, what I did do, I did allow him to change my life. I allowed him. You have to allow him. Because if you say no in your heart, then he says no to you. The Bible says draw close to God and he will draw close to you. But if you say no to God, it's not that he's going to walk away from you. He's going to stand there. You're going to walk away from him. We walk away from God. God doesn't walk away from us. God's a blessing. He's a, he's a giver. He wants to give you life and life more abundantly if you would just receive it. And I'm not talking about money. I know how America is. All about money, cars, prestige, power, position. It's not about that in the kingdom of God. Because the first will be last and the last will be first. That's the way he operates. But we have to surrender our lives. You have to surrender. You have to say, Lord, I want you more than I want stuff for me. Because we already tried it our ways, guys. Some of you guys have already been... 25, 35, 45, 55, 65. You tried it your way. It didn't work. It did not work. And it's not working. It's not going to work either. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to work if you do it your way. But God is going to do something if you allow him to. Art, Artie, can I call you Artie because you're the younger one? Amen. If you allow him, he'll change your life. And we can be in church for 20, 30 years and never have our lives change. You can sit here and think you're, you're, you're a Christian because you're in, a, in a, a building, a church. You're not. A lot of people aren't Christians that are in, in churches. They are not Christians. It's those who do the will of the Father. And I'm not saying perfect because not one of us is perfect. I'm raising my hand. Not one of us is perfect. But our hearts toward God. 
you think about God. I hope you think about God. That's how you know you're a Christian. You're thinking about God, what he wants from you, what he requires of you. Did you hear the voice of God? It's a beautiful thing to know that. I was a heathen, just like you guys. I had angry issues just like you. I drank just like you. I cheated. I committed adultery. I lied. I fornicated, manipulated. I did all that stuff you guys did. But God forgave me for that. And now we live different lives now. And he begins to bless you. But I had to make a decision to follow Jesus or not. And old as I am right now, I know I would be dead. Been saved for 29 years. Art, I already would have been dead. Not because I'm a bad dude or, get, but you know, none of that stuff. Just I knew that where my life was going. The path I was on. And I had to change my life. And God helped me, and he did it, and he's continued now. I, I haven't ar uh, uh, arrived because I'm a pastor. I got trips just like you trip. You trip, pastor trips. You blow it, pastor blows it too. But we're, we're not blowing it like we used to no more. Amen? Amen? So I just want to encourage you guys that today as, as we open up the word, open your heart. Open your ears and let the Spirit of God speak to you, the Holy Spirit. You guys are hearing his voice now, some of you. It's a beautiful thing when you hear the voice of God inside of you. And as you grow in the things of God, you're going to begin to hear the word audibly in your, in your outside. You're going to hear your name called out. I've heard his na my name called out many times, Angel, Angel. And I know it's him calling me. And I just say, what do, you, what do you want from me, Lord? What are you requiring of my life? And he gives you instruction. If you be quiet, he'll give you instruction of what he wants from your life. And if you don't do what he says, then you'll end up right where you're at again. Until you say yes, amen? Until you say yes, that your life begins to move on now. So I just want to encourage you guys with that. Right now I'm, the, I'm under the unction of the Holy Spirit. So so we're going to bless the Lord. We're going to honor the Lord. I know some of you guys say, when's this guy going to tell me to sit down? <laughs> if you were in a concert, you wouldn't be sitting down. If there was a concert going on with your hip-hop players or your mariachis and all that, you'd be standing up, you know, going at it. You can stand for a minute or two. If you have your Bibles, put them in your right hand. Say it like you mean it. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught, Today I will be taught. <laughs> Is that the word of God. <laughs> I boldly confess. I boldly confess. My, mind My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Heart is I'll, never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive, I'm about to receive. The, incorruptible. the incorruptible, the indestructible, indestructible. ever-living seed, ever seed of the word of God. The word of God. I'll, never I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Smile at people as you sit down, as you enter in. This is the greatest place on the earth, is the kingdom of God. It's not Disneyland, and I say Disneyland because they'll make you dizzy with, the, with their prices. Amen. If you would uh, open up your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 through 6. Where King David 
the king of Israel, uh, he, had, he had problems. He lived, he lived a life before God, and the Bible says that he's a man after God's own heart. But if you know the story, if you read the story, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, if you read uh, those and you read Psalms, you'll, you'll know who King David is. He doesn't have to be a stranger. He doesn't have to be someone you don't know. You can get to know him personally through the word of God. God's Holy Spirit will open up a relationship with you through his word. Amen. And he'll bless you and he'll honor you. And he'll, uh, he'll bless your life, man. He'll give you a beautiful life. A beautiful life. Thank you, sir. Let me set this up for you. Uh, it's about the uh, Amalekites that uh, they were enemies to the children of Israel and, and King David. And uh, these were the people that attacked Israel, the children of Israel, after they left Egypt. When God set the people free, he brought them out of the wilderness and he brought them to, the, uh, to a beautiful land and he began to minister to them and these people, when they saw him, they saw them coming out of Egypt, uh, they attacked them. They attacked Israel. And that will happen in our lives. When you give your life to Jesus Christ and you make a decision to do it, you're going to be attacked. The enemy is going to make sure you get attacked. He's going to try to discourage you from living a holy life, from living a good life that God has promised us. God has promised us a life. And we'll have sickness, we'll have diseases in our lives, we'll have shortcomings in our lives, we'll falter and all that. But that doesn't mean that God breaks his promises, he doesn't. It's up to us to get up and continue to go. It's how we respond instead of react to things in our lives. We react as, as people, we react to things instead of respond to things. Someone says something to you, you're ready to get crazy. You're ready to throw your earrings off and throw your head up and let's do hair up and let's do this. The guys are ready to put their boots on and, you know, and do whatever they have to do. Uh, we we're always ready to defend ourselves. We can't even get a, 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 a someone rebuking you or correcting you with love. You know, we, we just have to defend ourselves. You don't have to, but we choose to. We choose to do that. And when you do that, God begins to speak to you and he begins to teach you a new way that that doesn't have to happen. You don't have to fight with your husband. You don't have to fight with your husband's uh, uh, ex-wife. You don't have to fight with your ex-wife's -hus uh, husband. Uh, I, I don't know whoever said that that was just the natural, that's the way it goes, you know. He, he married my ex-wife, he married my ex-husband, you know, we're enemies. Now, why? I never understood that. Because I, I got married again for the second time I got married, and uh, her, her ex-husband was a cool guy to me. He was cool. He was some people that were good people, you know. When I met him, had respect, shook my hand and everything, and we started getting along with each other. I never argued with him or nothing. You know, one time we did have little words. The only reason is because I pulled his daughter's, she was like seven years old. I pulled her, her ear because she smacked her lips at me. And I'm like, mm, back where I come from, you can't do that kind of stuff. The way I was raised, you know, you can't smack your lips. So I pulled her ear and I said, can't do that, little girl. Do not do that to me. You know, and she went and told her dad. And her dad just said, Angel, I appreciate, very with respect, I appreciate Angel. If you wouldn't lay hands on my daughter and just come talk to me, you know, and I'll, and I'll talk to her. I said, you got it, my brother. You're right. And I said, I apologize to you, and I apologize to the young lady. My, my daughter, she's my daughter. I've had her since she was seven years old. She's 32 now, 30, yeah, 32 years old. Uh, and we just got along. We never, after that, we never had no words or nothing like that. He comes to the barbecues when the, the uh, grandbabies had the uh, bar uh, barbecues and parties and things like that. So I got along with him. 
It's a choice. It's a choice that you make if you want to get along with somebody. Not everyone has to be your enemy. I know that we have enemies. I know that. Natural enemies. The devil is your natural enemy. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. That's what he's come to do. The devil's come to kill, steal, and destroy your life. And that's why there's a lot of people out there that have no, they have no purpose. They have no uh, rhyme or reason to their lives because the enemy steals that. You know, but God wants to restore you back to your right place that, you know what, your, last, your, your name ain't, you know, hey, Hopper no more. Your name ain't, you know, Little Wino no more. You know, it ain't Psycho. You know, it, it's no longer that name. Your name is your name. I, I told a brother yesterday at our men's offering, I said, at, at, at our uh, men's team uh, ministry, I said, brother, your real name is Jose. Go by your name. Don't go by your nick, nick, nickname because you'll be identified by that. And the enemy will use your past to destroy your future. And we have to stop that as people of God. We have to continue to fight away from our past and begin to walk into the future and the hope that God has for us. God has a hope for every one of us. I was lost too. As, as any one of you guys here, I was lost. Some of you guys know where I came from and my lifestyle, but God gave me a new life. And that's what I want to share, that as the Amaleks char uh, charged after Israel, David and his men were fighting with the Philistines, with the Philistines, one, you know, with, the, with them as a team. But when the Philistine uh, prince, I guess he was, he was a prince, that he, uh, he saw David and his men there, and he tells them, what are the Israels doing here with us? What are these Hebrews doing with us? And he says, I don't trust them. And David and his men sat in the back. They took care of the back, you know, the thousands of people. But David was in the back taking care, make sure no one comes behind him. And the Hebrew, uh, one of the princes talks to one of the leaders and says, we, I don't want him here. You know, I've heard stories of this guy. That Saul killed a thousand and David killed ten thousand. So they knew his power. They knew what God had given him, the anointing. He gave him the strength to be a man and to be a leader. God gave him that. And uh, so sometimes you don't even have to do nothing wrong because even David... Asked the guy, like, what did we do? What did I do? What did I do to you? Nothing. The guy that was the middleman says, you did nothing to them. You've been honest to me. You've been faithful to me because he was a leader too. And he's, he's part of the uh, army that's fighting against the Amite, uh, Am, Am, uh, like, Amakites. Thank you, Amakites. He's, he's, he's one of their leaders and. He says, you did nothing wrong to these people. You didn't do, the dirt, you didn't do them dirty. Enough. You've been loyal to me all this time that we fought. He says, he just doesn't want you around. Some people are jealous just because of your name and who you are, the way you look. And ladies, don't get all big-headed, you know, because you're a good-looking lady. Don't get all big-headed. Keep your head, thing, you know, right? And you men that are... Handsome guys, I know some of you guys stay in that mirror longer than a woman does, you know. <laughs> stay away from those mirrors, you know, in Jesus' name. But uh, it, was, it was no fault of his that they wanted him out. And he says, okay, I'll leave. And the guy says, but leave in the morning before the sun rises. Grab all your men and just leave to the side. That way there's no trouble or nothing like that. Because sometimes when you walk away from trouble, when you walk away from uh, situations in your life that are not your fault, you said, you know, you said nothing wrong. You did nothing wrong, but you want to walk away and you want to start doing something different, living a whole different life. The enemy will come. And he'll badger you. Oh, what, are you afraid? What? Can't handle it no more? You know. Thought you were strong. Thought you were a Christian. Are you not a Christian or, or not? 
The enemy does things like that. And he'll use people that are your family, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, your neighbors, old good friends. He'll use whoever he has to use to get you distracted, to t try to get you to get to bite the, get the, the bait. He'll try that. Tried many times in 20 years of my life that they try to use your past. They'll use your past. Amen. And we got to be smarter than our past. I plumbed for many years. I was a plumber for many years. And I remember when I would get into trouble trying to solve a, pl a plumbing problem, my boss would say, Angel, you got to be smarter than the job. You got to be smarter than what you're doing. You know, like I'm having trouble. You got to be smarter than this tool. You got to learn how to use this tool. So we got to be smarter than the enemy. The, the Bible says that we're not ignorant to his devices, to the, lie, to the lies and the tricks of the enemy. You know a lie when you hear a lie. Do you know something's evil when you hear? You can, you, if, if you're very sensitive to the things of God, you can sense evil. I've been around people and I can just sense evil when I'm around them. I go, These are evil people. I can sense that around them, you know, so I just separate myself. And I've been called names, and I've been given the number one sign with the middle finger, you know, and things like that in my face. Call me, you know, sell, sell out, whatever they wanted to do. But I chose to not to react to that. I chose to respond in the grace and the forgiveness that God gave me. I forgave them. The grace that God has given me, I, I uh, shared that grace with them. And this is what I'm trying to teach you guys, that learn how to share grace instead of revenge. You know, learn how to respond to people and not react to them. Because when you react, you know what happens. You guys know, you guys are experienced people. You react to somebody, yeah, you're going to find, you're going to be find yourself on the, on the couch. And she's going to have that big old king size bed all to herself. And you think you won. I won. I showed her. Yeah, big dummy. Sure you did. <laughs> but here, this guy, this prince, he, he begins to tell king, uh, king David that I don't want you here. And David is saying, wow, I've helped them fight. I've helped them win. And now they're going to reject me. And that will happen in our lives. You will help people. You will encourage people. You'll be a blessing to people. And they're going to reject you. No matter how good you are, they're going to reject you. But you got to know that, and that's why you have to protect your heart, and you have to protect your mind. You have to protect your heart through the Word of God. You have to protect your, your mind, your heart, your soul through the Word of God. This is our sword with the Word of God. Not our fists, not our anger. That, do, that doesn't work out. It doesn't. It may work out for a little season, but it doesn't work out. Some of you guys know this. You guys are already, some of you guys are ex experienced in this of who to fight not to fight, who to argue with, who not to argue with. You who've been married for five years or, or better, you know, you know who the morning person is in the, in the couple. Um, don't look at nobody, no elbows, no kicking, no none of that, you know. You know who the morning person is in the, in the morning and you know who's not. So don't start no trouble. Don't go to them and say, hi, good morning, how are you doing? You know you're starting, Pedro. You know you're starting trouble. Don't do that. If, if he's a grouch, let him be a grouch. Good morning from afar, and you go do what you got to do. Go get your coffee and everything. When he's done with the restroom, if you have one restroom, then you go to the restroom. Now, hey, come on, hurry up, I got to go. They know you're, you're there, and they know your routine. And the same thing with, with you ladies, you know, if you're a grouch, you know, uh, in the morning, 
because all of us have our moments, right? That, you know, uh, I'm going to let him go first because I don't want to get in his way because we're just going to start trouble. You got to learn how to take the higher road. One amen. Praise God. I won't preach over here. So <laughs> David took the high road, the higher road. In verse, uh, verse 30, now I set that up. Here we go. Now what happened when David and the men came to Ziglag on the third day and the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziglag and, and, and attacked at Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who uh, were with them from small to great. They did, not, uh, they did not kill anyone, but they carried them away. They kidnapped them, in other words. And they went their way. The Amalekites took them and took their woman, took their children with them. Amen. So David and his men came to the city. They drive in. They walk in. Not drive in. They, we drive it. They, they used to walk in. And there it was burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had all been taken captives. David and the men and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power until uh, to weep. You guys understand what's going on, right? They get to the city and everyone's gone. All their women are gone, their sons, their daughters are gone. And these men that are warriors that have taken heads before, that have taken many lives, are now crying because their treasures are gone. Something happened to one of my friends, his close brother. And when it happened to him, my close friend started crying. And back then, you know, you're a hard-headed person. You have a hard heart. You have a hard head. And you're telling them, what are you crying about, brother? Come on, we're just going to go back. We're going to get back. We're going to get him. Just hold on. He's my brother, and he's crying and crying and crying. <clears throat> Back then, I didn't understand that, you know. But now, as I walk through Christ, I understand. Then if, when they hurt your son, your daughter, they're hurting you too. When they hurt your brother, when they hurt your friend, they're, they're hurting you too. And that's what the enemy wants to do. And so these men, they were warriors. They were fighters. They knew battle. They weren't afraid of battle. When they saw this, they began to cry. And they cried so much. Have you ever cried so much that there's no more tears coming out? But you're still making the sounds, you know? But no more, no more tears because of what's going on. Amen? You know, and uh, that happens to every one of us. I've cried myself dry before. You know, just this year I lost my brother, I lost my father this year. You know, and you cry till you can't cry no more. And then faith steps in and faith begins to heal you. And faith begins to give you courage and begins to build you up. Faith, the faith in God, his word. Amen. So and David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept. And they had no power uh, they had no more power to weep. Verse 5. David's two wives, he, he, they put their names, I'm not going to even try to say their names. They're, they're there if you read them. Are they there? David, uh, her name, and Abigail, I knew that one. The widow of uh, Naba, the uh, Camelite, had been taken captive. His wives, they took his wives. Imagine someone kidnapping your wife, brother. Someone kidnapping your wife. So imagine that. You would be crying too, right? Upset. All of us would. He says, verse 6, Now David was greatly distressed for the people, check it out, spoke of stoning him. These are his men. These are men that he ate with and broke bread with and laughed and cried and talked about victory and raising each other up and everything. And now they see that their loved ones are gone and the other uh, uh, armies have taken them away. <laughs> David's fault. 
He's the one that took us over to go fight. And now we're here walking away from our people. And they took our, they took our family. <clears throat> it's Stone David. And that's happened here in the ministry. Pastor does something and people don't agree with it. And <clears throat> they didn't like the way it came out. I don't agree with pastor. I don't want to be around pastor right now. And that's been told to me to my face. I don't want to talk to you right now. I don't want to uh, be around you, pastor, right now. I don't even want to see you in a picture, bro. So we say amen. And we walk away from that. And we have to learn that in our lives. You got to learn to take the good and the bad. Because guess what? We're going to be friends again. Amen. Some of you guys know, you know, you're looking at me, right? We're friends again, you know. When we weren't friends, you know, two years ago, three years ago. And this is happening with David. They're telling him they want to stone him. They spoke of stoning him because the souls of all the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But check, check out what a, what a leader does. What a man of God does. What a woman of God does. A woman, a man that their faith is in God, their confidence is God, their trust is in God and not themselves. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but with all your heart, trust in the Lord, and he directs your steps. But you have to learn how to trust him. You got to learn how to, thank you, you got to learn how to have confidence in his word and what he's spoken, what he's promised. A lot of us, we don't, we don't trust God, we don't have confidence in God because we don't know the promises of God. We don't know the word. So we walk around like people that are just wondering with no purpose, nowhere to go. And we blame pastor and pastors and leaders, but it's not their fault. I'm feeding you here right now Sunday, but it's up to you to feed yourself every day reading the word. That's not, my, that's not my problem. I'm here to counsel you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to give you the word when you need the word. If you have something, I'm here to help you. I'm not going to turn you away. Many people call me. They're not even from my church. They watch us on Facebook and everything like that, and they like us. And they call me, and they ask me for, you know, a counsel. You know, and my first thing is, like, who is your pastor? And they'll say, so, so. I say, can you speak to him? Because I don't want to say something that you've taught him different from what I'm teaching here at the church. No, Pastor, don't worry about it. I trust you, so go ahead. You can talk to me. And we give him counsel. But I'll say, I'm going to speak to your pastor, though, first, too. Especially if it's something personal, I'm going to talk to your pastor. And then the pastor says, I'll, I'll speak to them. And I'll say, this is what I said. This is the counsel I gave them. To seek God. Amen. To read your word. Amen. Ask God for his wisdom. Some of us make decisions in our lives about eternal life. Let me, let me, let me, let me get here for you real quick. Let me just take a little rabbit trail. That we, make, we make decisions for eternal life. Your soul is on the balance of going to heaven or to hell, and you make a decision, I don't need Jesus, I don't want Jesus, I don't have to have Jesus. You know, you make that decision, and it's, it's not an informed decision you made. A lot of us, we, we, we speak out of uh, ignorance. Thank you. Ignorance is not a bad word. It is not a bad word. We use it as, that. oh, you ignorant, you idiot. It's not a bad word. It means you're misinformed. Or you're not informed. You don't know the truth. So you're acting because you, you know not the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you want to get to the Father, you must believe in him. That's the only way to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. And 
these guys are making, some of these guys are making decisions on what they heard from their brothers and their friends and other people, them, and they're making the same decision you're making. That brother may be angry. There's something happened in his life. And now you want to blame the pastor, you want to blame the leader, you want to blame God. You don't give God all kinds of glory and praise when you get all kinds of money or you get a good job. There's a lot of people like that. They don't want to give God glory and praise, but they'll give the devil glory and praise. I was one by my lifestyle. We praised the enemy. We worshiped him the way we lived. And then finally we got informed. We got some little knowledge in us. And now we can make a, a strong and a good, confident decision when you begin to read the Bible. And I told a young man that. He was a very uh, knowledgeable man. He could read any book you want. And I would go to him because he's at my office. Uh, next to him, I would say, uh, what's, what's the uh, definition of that word? And he could, boom, 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 boom. And I look it up later and I, he was right. That's the definition of that word. But he didn't know Jesus Christ. And he says, Baruch, how can you say you love Jesus? How can you know that you're going to heaven and you never even saw this God? I said, because I have a relationship with him. I don't have to see him to know him. I know him. I said, but let me tell you a little story. And I told him this real quick. I go, you're about to make a decision for your soul right now. That God is going to require your soul at the end. If it's for heaven or for hell, God's going to require your soul. I said, you're making this decision right now. Not even read the book. I said, because you read a lot of books. I see you reading all the time. I said, but you're about to say no to Jesus Christ and yes to the devil or yes to hell. I said, what about this? I said, what about if, if I die and there's no heaven? But I lived my life the way I live right now. I said, I lived a clean life. I lived a pure life. I lived a good life. I lived an honest life, a truthful life. I said, but there's no heaven. I said, what did I lose? I said, I didn't lose nothing. Because there's no heaven and hell in your, in your world. But I lived a good life. I said, but what about you? What about if you live the way you're living right now? Without God, living in a helpful nature, I said, if, if you live this way at the end of your life, what about there is a heaven and hell? You lose. Because you made a decision not to believe, and now the price is your soul. Is eternal life. Because you made a decision. An Decision that wasn't informed or had knowledge of it. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. David strengthened himself in the Lord. Other readings say that he stirred himself up in the Lord. And there's times that you're not going to have a Barnabas with you. There's times that you're not, you're, your wife is not going to be there. Your husband is not going to be there. Your, your compadre is not going to be there. A good friend is not going to be there to pray for you and to encourage you. They're not going to be there, you know, for whatever reason. They don't know. Maybe they don't know that you're hurting. Maybe they don't know that you need encouragement. They don't know. You're going to have to stir yourself up. You're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to have to get in the word and begin to read and meditate upon the word. And I share this with a lot of men that I counsel here. We have a great men's ministry. I'm going to put a little plug there. You know, uh, we have like 60 men here and we help these men. We encourage these men. And I tell them, I said, the only way you're going to get better is through the word of God, by prayer and reading and meditating and speaking with other brothers and iron sharpening iron. And you ladies, the same thing. 
That's how you get sharper, amen? With one another, amen? We need, we need one another. But if that, if that Barnabas is not there, if that encourager is not there, what are you going to do, hermana? Sit there and just feel sorry for yourself and let the enemy just beat you up? Or are you going to go call your, uh, your, your gossiping uh, person, your friend, your best friend that just agrees with you even if you're wrong? You're still going to agree with them. They're gossips, male or female. Men gossip too. Not just a woman. Men gossip too. So they, you, you go to them. They're not going to give you the truth. You, you want to speak to somebody that's going to challenge you. Somebody's going to tell you the truth. That you're wrong, hermana. The way you're speaking, the way you're behaving, it's wrong. You're wrong. If you ask for forgiveness, God will give you some instruction. And I want to give you some instruction. And it's up to us to receive that or not. I try to help a lot of people in this church. And there's some brothers that don't want help. There's some sisters that don't want help. And all you got to do is just. I try to talk to you already for about five weeks. And you don't want to hear what I got to hear. So, brother, you just go ahead on. You got all the answers. Do what you got to do, hermano. And they live their lives. And then you hear about them three, four months later that they're out there again. They're out in the streets. They're doing their things all over again. They might not get high or drink or anything, but they're right back to their anger, to their bitterness, to their slothfulness. And we got to stop that. Amen. King David found himself uh, in between a rock and a hard place. And many of you have felt that place before in your lives, right? Many of you have. Many of us even here today have tough decisions to make, tough choices to make about situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in right now. I'm not talking about divorce and all that stuff because some of you guys are sitting here like, yep, yep, I'm getting the answer. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to divorce her. I'm supposed to get rid of this guy or get rid of this girl. No. That's not the, that's not the choice. Father, what can you do to help me, to strengthen me? And a lot of it's in our praise and our worship. As we worship God, as we praise God, as we dance before God, as we yell out a hallelujah, glory be to God, as, as you do that, there's freedom in that. I was a lot like a lot of you men here. I wasn't free. Jesus Christ was my Lord, but I'm still, yep, I was shackled and lost, angry at everybody still. Until I begin to, God began to tell me what worship was about, what praise is all about. And it freed me. And I began to worship. I began to raise my hands. It was awkward to raise your hands as a proudful man. When you're proud, oh, my God, try to get your hands up. Like, you're like, oh, come on, get your hands up. Oh, 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 no. You're fighting with yourself. God is saying, I'm trying to get you free. Just raise your hands. You know, oh, no puedo, no quiero. No, oh, no, I say, I'm not going to do it. You know, we do that. Even women, amen? You don't do it. And God is trying to get you free. Because all this stuff that's holding you down, once you raise your hands, some stuff falls off of you. That's what he wants to do. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a freedom, a liberty. I was bound. I was bound with anger. My brother died at 16. I was 15. All I knew was anger after that. All I knew was anger. Anybody looked at me wrong and like, we can do this. I wasn't afraid to die because I was so hurt. I was so bitter. I was so angry. And God began to set me free as I begin to worship God and praise God. I begin to understand what he was trying to do for Angel Baruch. He wanted to change my life, my mindset, my character. 
And there's some of you women here that I look at you and I'm speaking to the women right now because some of you women, uh, this is going to be a little harsh word, but I'm going to say it anyway. Is that all right? Amen. Some of you ladies act like dudes, you know. You're all tough and wrong. That's my man. You're not a dude. You're a woman. You're a, gen- you're a lady. Amen. We, we shouldn't have to act like that. God wants to set you free. He wants, to, he wants you to be a lady. Thank you. Uh, he wants you to be a gentleman. Imagine, Ben. <laughs> uh, Ted, imagine being a gentleman. Gentle. I mean, the real word, gentle. <laughs> I call him smiles because of the mug, you know. I say, he's, my, <laughs> he's my buddy, you know. That's why he's got my back right here, you know. The guy wants to change our lives. And yesterday you saw the men jumping up and down and praising God and some just doing a little two-step, you know, praising God. It's okay. That's freedom because those shackles that they have on their, on their ankles are going to break one day and they're going to start doing the cha-cha and all that stuff, you know. They're going to just praise God and bless God. They're going to be set free, amen. And, and I know some of you guys are saying, well, we, I don't go to that kind of church. But you can still be free. It doesn't matter what denomination you came from, if you're Catholic, if you're Lutheran, if you're Pentecostal, if you're Word of Faith, if you're Calvary Chapel. They, 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 those are just denominations, men that made, men made those things. You don't, you're not going to find that in the Bible. God never called me to be a Catholic. I was a Catholic, born raised a Catholic. He's, oh, angel, my Catholic son. He never said that. My son. He didn't put no position and no time. He never says, oh, Pastor Angel, I need to speak to you. I never heard that. 20 years I've been a pastor. I never heard God say, Pastor Angel. Never gave me a position. Angel. And he'll say it like that. Angel. Angel. I want to talk to you. And you've got to make time for God. If you don't make time for God, then you don't have time for nobody. For nobody. And you'll end up right where you are today. King David, he stirred himself up. But David strained himself in the Lord. Not in his brothers, not his comadres, not in his friends. In the Lord. He went to ask God, what's going on here? All this is happening. And they want to kill me. My own Men want to kill me. The people of this church want to kill me. He went to get God's wisdom. Sure, these two right here back there, guys. Let me just share. I'm just going to read these scriptures out to you guys. But if you're taking notes real quick. Proverbs 11, 14. Proverbs 11, 14. Proverbs is the wisdom of God. You want to be a smart guy? You want to be a knowledgeable guy? You want to be a, a, a wisdom, a guy full of wisdom, not a wise guy? Now, you know what I'm talking about when I say wise guy. Not one of those guys. You, you, you want to be a guy that has wisdom? It, Proverbs 11, 14. Oh, they got it up. They're quick. They're good. The one that follows that is 15, Proverbs 15, 22. It says, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of concerts, there is safety. When we go to battle, when we go to fight, you got to have a plan. And you got to talk to people. You got to learn how, you, how we're going to get this over. You talk to your wife. It ain't your decision. You, at the end, it's your decision, Art, because you're the, you're the head of that house. But you, mm, she's looking at me like, <laughs> she knows he is. He is the head of the house, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's his position in God. God gave him that. Amen. You know, a woman don't give you your position. God does. Amen. She's a helpmate. Say helpmate. helpmate. That's who you are. As women, you're a helpmate. You're there to give them advice, share a little wisdom with them. Amen. Uh, unless you're a single woman, then you're going to have to make that by yourself. Amen. But with God leading you. Amen. But if you're married or you got a girlfriend and uh, this is my woman. Better ask for some help, right? 
And that's what he's talking about. Multitude of counselors, there is safety. We go to somebody else before we even go to our wife. You know why we don't go to our wives? Because you're about to tell me the truth. <laughs> as long as we say it in grace, right? As long as we're all up in the guy's grill and all stuff like that. We don't do that no more. Can I get an amen? Amen. We're not doing that no more, right, ladies? Hmm. No amen right there. It's okay. <laughs> Right? Where there is no counsel, the people fall. Here's the next one. Without counsel, pl uh, plans go away, ar ar awry. But in the multitude of counsels, they are established. The plans of God are established when we talk to each other. Amen. Twins, you two talk to each other all the time, right? You guys know each other's thoughts at times and things like that, your emotions, right? Because you guys talk. And we're going to go this, we're going to go to school together, we're going to... You're going to take that class, I'm going to take that class, but we're going to have this class. You guys talk. There's plans, right? Even mom don't even know your plans. She doesn't pay attention. She's, up, <laughs> she's, in, the, she's in the word. Amen? But without counsel, plans don't come to pass. You got to have a plan. And that's why people don't succeed in life. Because we don't have a plan. We just live, que sera, sera. You wake up and you have no plan when you wake up. We should have a plan. We should be ready to bless one another, honor one another. What's your plan? Brother Ray, what is your plan? Just stop, you know. What's your plan, James? What's your plan, James? What plan do you have? Got to have a plan if you're going to succeed. Hugo, you got a plan, right? For you and your woman, right? I got a plan for me and my wife. I want to bless her. I want to help her to become the best wife, the best. I want to become the best father I can be, the best husband I can be. That's what you want. That's what you want. But you got to have a plan. You got a plan, right? The two twins, you have plans, right? Two years from now, three from years, you know, where, where are you going to be? You know, your profession and things like that. Where are you guys going to live? You're not going to live over there where we, where we come from, right? You guys are going to live somewhere else, huh? probably Montana somewhere, you know, New York, they're thinking, I don't know. She says, no, I want them to live with me. No, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, so there's plans that we have, and that's what God told David. I have a plan for you. I have a future. I have a hope. Not to do you wrong. Not to do you dirty. I don't have that plan. The plan I have is to encourage you and pick you up and make you better than you've ever been before. And as a husband and wife, as a father, as a mother, as a guardian of someone, you got to have a plan. Sit and talk to each other. What's the plan? And that's why women make choices for men. Because the men don't have a plan. You, you invite your woman to go out and eat. What's the first thing she's going to say? Where do you want to eat? Where do you want to go? And the man, uh, wherever you want to go, <laughs> you know. What do you feel like having? I know what I like to eat. One of my favorite foods is Chinese food. I love Chinese food. So when they ask me, where do you want to go? I'm going to eat Chinese food. Oh, no, we don't want Chinese food. <laughs> okay. So what do you want to eat? I said Italian. Oh, no, I don't want Italian food. And I'm in my head say, please don't say tacos. Please don't say tacos. Please don't say tacos. <laughs> you know, we have those all the time. Please don't say tacos. No, you know. Oh, Mediterranean. I'm like, oh, my God. And, you know, then, or I'll say Mediterranean. They'll say, no, no, no. Three times they don't know where they want to go. And I said, you guys don't know where you want to go. You don't even know what you want to eat. I know where I want to go. I have a plan. I know what I want to eat. So I said, you guys make up your mind because I'm going to go get some Chinese food. And as I'm going, if you want to text me and tell me what you want, I'll go get it for you. 
but you ain't going to, you don't want to eat that? I'm good with it. I, I'll, I'll feed myself. Amen? Same thing with us as Christians, men and women. Have a plan. David got attacked. Got his people, his family and people taken away from him. But he went to God. And God gave him insights. You've been attacked. It's time to re restore, right? Reload. It's time to come back to Christ and let God be first. He'll, he'll change your life. My life has been changed by the hell left me. Hell was one of the times my best friend. Anger, bitterness, that was my best friend. I slept with that stuff. But God began to love me and put value in me, Eddie. Did he give me a purpose? And this is a trip right here to preach to people. It's a trip. It's mind-blowing. Kid with no high school education from Compton, California, from the wrong side of tracks. They tell me I was from the wrong side of tracks. I thought I was on the right side, of them, but we're not. Amen. But God, <laughs> yeah, God chose <laughs> But God adds value to you. You have value. You have purpose. If you would just raise my hand. That's what I did one time. I said, Father, if you can use me, you can use for me for anything. If you can use me, Lord, I want to be used. And I began, I was a parking thing, a parking lot guy. We had, I came from a big church, three, four hundred people, so they took care of the parking lot. I was out there for a whole year. Then when they brought me in to do usher, I thought I got promoted. I'm like, yeah, I'm an usher now. I'm all happy and everything, you know. Then you just begin to grow. I worked the nursery. I worked children's ministry. At our, that church, they used to let men, men, I don't let you guys, I don't let men work in the nursery. Just decision I made. I only have ladies over there, not, not men, you know. But you can teach the children. You can teach the 5, 6, 7-year-olds, 8, 9-year-olds, the 10, 11, 12-year-olds, and 13 to 18-year-olds. If you're a man, I, I would love to have men teaching 10, 11, and 12-year-olds because those, those are the ages that they're ready to step into some things. And they need a man. It's something different when a man is in the house. You know, I know you, some of you ladies say, oh, I can do just as good as any man. You can't. I'm going to pop your bubble. You cannot do as good as a man. God made him a man for a purpose. He made you a woman for a purpose. And he made you together for a purpose. You just got to learn how to work together. You got to get along. It's hard to get along with one another, huh? We first met each other. Oh, my God. I've only got eyes for you, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, six months, a year later, like, I, yeah, I don't see him. But that wrestler does that. John, uh, you can't see me, you know. That's how we act sometimes as, as Christians. But God, re, uh, he restored King David and all the people. They had to go fight for them. You have to go fight for your family. You have to fight for what's right. We used to fight for neighborhoods, little pockets of a city that didn't even belong to us. We fight for a toothbrush, a towel. It's not even yours, and you're fighting for it. We fight for some dumb stuff, right? You took $50 out of the bank account? You took $50 out? You didn't tell me. 
We fight for $50. Like if you're never going to have $50 ever again in your life. Is that that mind-blowing, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Serious, it blows my mind because I used to do the same thing. Now, you know, as you, everything, I ain't tripping 50 bucks. I ain't tripping no 50 bucks, man. I'm going to give 50 bucks, you know. I'm going to get them back. But I just want to encourage you guys. After an attack, things are going to happen. But it's how you respond and not react. You saw your mama react. You saw your grandma react. You saw her mother react. And now you're, ain't nothing changed. You still reacting like they are. You can't do that. There has to be a change somewhere, and that's in our heart. Amen? Let's praise the Lord. Praise God. In Jesus' name. We're going we're gonna to do communion here. You guys give us another 10 minutes. We'll do communion. Oh, okay, very good. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to drink some water. Talked a lot. With me, you guys do all the talking. I just listen to you guys. I'll be on the phone and I only get good morning. And all of a sudden, 45 hours, 50 minutes later, like, oh, my God. Can I get an uh, interruption here? Let me get in there. These men are, uh, some of them are armor bearers and some of them are just men who love me, that respect me. They're not my, some guy goes, well, those are your bodyguards, huh? Like, God is my bodyguard. <laughs> I'm not tripping. I serve them as they serve me too, right? I pray for them. I pray for their families. I visit them. We serve one another, right? I even buy them lunch. They should be buying me lunch, and I buy them lunch. <laughs> hmm. Amen. And the guy's like, uh-oh, pastor's going to not want to eat with us. I'll eat with you guys. I, if I got to pay for it, I'd do it. Amen. This is a time of worship. This is a time that we reflect on our sins, our shortcomings, on things we've done in our lives. And if there's any sin in your heart right now, in your mind, just ask the Lord to forgive you. Time to reflect. And God will forgive you because the Bible says that he's just and faithful to forgive us all our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is just and faithful. We're not. He is. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians that Jesus and his disciples were up in the upper room with other people too. Not just his disciples. Other people were there. And he took a piece of bread. A loaf of bread. He broke it off and he gave it to his disciples. He says... Take of this bread, eat of it when I tell you right now, but take of this bread and know that my body will be given up to you, for you, on the cross. He says, and when you do this, every time you break bread, do this in the remembrance of what I've done for you. That he gave his life for us. He forgave us our sins. We're forgiven. So I want you to know that. You don't have to feel guilty if you blow it and stuff like that. You, that's why you ask for forgiveness before you take it. In Jesus' name. So he says, when you take this, do it in the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. So do this in the remembrance of our Lord. Partake.
Jesus described a vessel of, of wine. And he poured it into a cup. He says, this wine represents my New Testament. My blood that will be shed for you and for the sins of your people and all of us. He says, when you drink of this wine, it represents my blood. Let's do this in the remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's do this in the remembrance of our Lord. When the Bible says that they, uh, they sang a, uh, a song afterwards. Thank the, thank the Lord for the forgiveness of your heart, of your sins in your heart. Thank you, sir. Today you're blessed. The Bible says that today by his word he's cleansed you. You're clean by his word today. The Bible says that every day, every day, every day is a new day. That God's mercies are new every day for us. We wake up, believe it or not, we're virgins today. You woke up a virgin in the sight of God. Got to pick up over here to the left. Gentleman right there needs help. Thank you. So we're free. We're free to bless the Lord, to honor the Lord here today. To live the life that God has called you to live. I'm free. I have the power, the authority to say no to sin. Now, imagine that. I can say no to sin. And I can say yes to God now. 29 years ago, I couldn't do that. The devil could make me do whatever he wanted to do and how to do it. I was a little thief today. I was a little puppet. You guys know that song, you know? I'm your puppet. Let's, let's live free now. We're going we're gonna to partake of, of food there behind the patio, underneath the patio, I should say. Go and meet somebody new. Go sit with somebody new. I encourage you young couples to go sit with somebody you don't know. Andy and Bobby, raise your hand. You guys can sit with Andy and Bobby. Sit with Josie and Ugo. Raise your hand right there. Do you know? You guys don't know them. You get to know them. It's awkward at first. But once they get to know you, they're just like you. A little different way, but they're different. They're just like you. We're going to go ahead and pray right now and dismiss, but uh, I want you guys to join us if you would join us. So they're going to have soups today, all different types of soups, different types of sandwiches, and some side, side dishes I think they brought too, you know. So uh, it's just a lunch. It ain't lunch, dinner, and a late nap, you know. Some people... Phew, No, just, just eat lunch, you know, just to break bread with one another. We're going to pray, but I don't want you guys to leave right away. We're, we're, we're going to, I want to do something. Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. As we heard the word, Father, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that we receive faith. We grew today in faith. We grew closer to you because you drew closer to us, Lord. And we thank you and we bless you for that. We thank you for the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, Lord, of your word. I pray that this word has fallen on good ground. The hearts and the souls of your people here, Lord. That that seed, the seed of life, will produce hope, faith, kindness, meekness, forgiveness, Lord. Love, forbearance. Patience, Lord God. That your fruit will be evident in our lives. For the world will say, how do you know they're Christians? By their fruit. So we bless you. We thank you for our children that are next door, our youth that are next door, for every minister that ministered today, Lord God. I thank you for their lives, and I thank you that their faith does not fail them but their faith continues to grow. I thank you for the blessings of life, eternal life. 
that our faith, our confidence is in you, Christ, and no other. In you. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen.